Ten.com. All right. Get a bunch of cool stuff to check out. Strongly recommend just perusing and seeing what you can find. But for the purposes of right now, we're going to go to the newsletters tab. Okay. Down here on the second row, first column, we have the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, I have sung high praises about this newsletter, and uh, I mean it. I read it every day. I think it's extremely interesting. I think Basil has an extraordinarily unique and effective approach to analyzing the markets. And uh, I've learned quite a bit, uh, doubly as well, you invest in this. You can see here he has a subscriber webinar. Now, he does this every so often, which is great. But when you subscribe, you can get access to his subscriber webinars as well, um, which is great. Now, you'll see that more when you subscribe. This is something a little bit separate. But uh, regardless, it is fantastic. Basil Chapman, how are you doing? Jacob, I am well. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, I'm interested to see what we have going on right now. Uh, kind of not a lot going on the market, at least as I can see it right now. So I'm interested to see what you have. Uh, you can see the chart, right? Um, yes. Give me one moment. Yes, so I can see the chart. Let me move it over here. Uh, okay, good. So what I want you to say is that this is a, a period fraught with uh, conflicting uh, sector movements. Uh, there's a very interesting pattern that I'm looking at here in the Dow uh, that in the middle, so on the left side is the Dow daily chart. Let me just get my pointer. There it is. On the left side is the Dow daily. In the middle is the Dow weekly chart with all the Chapman wave notations, etc. And on the right is the monthly chart. I'll go backwards for the moment. In the monthly chart, since we've just started July, we made a peak D. Now, in the Chapman Wave methodology, it's a very simple technique at its core. You look for the lowest low bar. You count each successively higher peak. At a certain point, if it starts, the technical starts to improve, it gets upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode. The moment I say buy mode, it implies that it should go to at least four higher peaks. Uh, that means that it goes alphabetically A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. The fourth highest peak, peak D, is where other things can happen. Just here in the corner, you can see there was a, a high of 40,077 on the 20th of May. It would be actually when short, a short term position in the Dow, uh, one to one short, the DOG, that is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have called long positions for some time. Didn't want to touch those. Those are uh, long one, one to one, but also three to one. So that means uh, we have kept that. The bias is towards the upside. And the short-term trend, we've had a pullback. And now we've gone peak A, peak B, peak C. Now, this is very interesting. So D is where other things can happen. The implication being that if you get a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode, there should be at least four higher peaks. Well, look at this. On the, on the monthly chart, you've got to a peak D. Now, we're having a little bit of a hiatus here, just a breather, uh, because the technicals are strong enough to say, there should be higher highs to come. The weekly chart, and this is what I mean, that the weekly chart is just kind of stuck. It's in the middle of the parameters of the 40, it's called a 40,100 for the moment, and the lows here at the 37,800 area, just kind of stuck in the middle, not breaking down, but not breaking up. So that says that there are specific Dow stocks that this is the Dow itself, so the Dow 30, I call it the Dow 30 because it's really not the Dow Industrials anymore. They're just two or three industrials <laughs> like Caterpillar. So this is just, it's a really perfect example of the overall economy of the United States. So in this particular instance, what we're looking at, it's a sideways motion. We've kind of got that in the Dow. Now, ironically enough, the Diamonds, which is the trading vehicle for the Dow, the DIA right here, that has gone to a peak D and it's pulling back a little bit, but it's walking the nine period moving average. So, so far, that's all very good action. So what I wanted to say is the tech sector represented by the SMHs, the semiconductor index, has had a pretty decent pullback from the 279 level on the 20th of June. And it's kind of been stuck. And for markets to move higher without the semiconductors, it's really unusual because they lead the markets up and they lead the markets down. And that's just suggesting to me that there's some kind of a rotation going on. That's the thing we have to keep in mind, that if you're having uh, uh, instruments, uh, stocks or uh, ETFs that are in the sector that's taking a breather, it can get very tiresome just looking at it because it's not participating for the first time in 
a long time, for the past two, three weeks, the semiconductors have been stuck. However, if you look at an Apple, the Mag 7, this is, look at this, as we're speaking, it's at an all-time high. It just broke above the previous high. Now it means in the weekly chart, it's in leg C. In the monthly chart, it's leg C. It means it's still bullish for 2024. If you look at Amazon, Amazon just started a leg D in the daily chart. It's only a leg B in the weekly chart, and it's a leg C in the monthly chart. Very positive. Microsoft has a, a different kind of a pattern because it has a pattern that's just been making higher highs and higher lows. It's trading at uh, an all-time high as we speak at 458.76 of 2.03. And look at this weekly chart. It's got a particular pattern. In my show tomorrow in the Tiger Technicians Hour, I'll take a little time and I'll go through this because it's becoming a little bit more common. This particular pattern here, we actually have a, a, an instrument at this point as core. Uh, this is core mining, core to lean. It used to be called just a silver stock, and it had the same pattern this oval pattern that I call the stalk leg. It hasn't broken it, but it's extended a little bit longer. And there's a pattern in the weekly. So I'll talk about the, this particular pattern tomorrow in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour. So I want you to go back to this and say, so Microsoft, I think is kind of, I, I should mention, we, we're along Microsoft on 338. Mm -hmm. So Microsoft trading at 458 right now. Um, it represents the Dow, the S&P, the, the NASDAQ, the XLK, which is the S&P Tech Spider Fund, and it has AIQ. So when I go to AIQ, we still have a position in the AIQ, the Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF, uh, just a couple of pennies of its all-time high as we speak. And that's what I was saying, that if you're in a sector that's stalling, it can be very frustrating. But if you're in a sector that's really working, I don't want to get in, in the way of that. And that's really my theme right now is to stay. If you're in any of those stocks that are going to all time highs or acting very well over the last two weeks, I recommend just staying. You can raise your stops if you want to take a little bit off. There's mm -hmm. absolutely no problem with that. But these are the leaders. And I suspect in 20 in the summer that, you know, we're in, just starting the summer here in the Boston area. But in the summer over the next two months to three months, I think they're going to be higher highs to come because those weekly charts, look at each one of these. In the, we're talking about this is the middle chart right here. That's a weekly chart. That's really strong to get AIQ, the Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF, to really slump. It would have to take a dive from the 36s down to under 31. If you want Microsoft to reverse, you're gonna, something's going to have to happen to really knock it down. It would have to get into the body of this. I call it the stalk leg formation. So this body, it would have to get underneath 430, and here it is trading at 458. So I think the theme has to be what's working, stay with what's working. But there's a sector that I'm interested in, and that's and I'll talk about that tomorrow in my show. But the IWM, the Russell 2000, has just started to show some kind of uh, staying power. And I think that that's what I'm going to be keeping my eye on for subscribers over the next few weeks. If we can get the Russell 2000 to rally, that's the small caps. That's great. Basil, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Folks, we'll be right back.